Good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning, Internet. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I do narrated Art Time Labs videos. And here I am with another one for today. Uh, this one is totally off the wall and <laughs> way off my schedule. Um, I didn't expect to do this uh, over in the weekend, but I did, and it was fun. Uh, I had a great time doing this. Uh, but basically, this illustration is for the character design challenge in the Facebook group um, for the month of January 2021. I wasn't planning on originally doing the character design challenge uh, simply because I have my own art projects that I wanted to take care of. And I originally wanted to prioritize my art projects, but... I, I don't know what happened this weekend. I guess I just felt like going rogue this weekend. And so I did. And it was fun because the best thing about this particular art process that I did was that I got to hang out with some of my really, really great friends. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like a drawing jam session while hanging out with people over on the Internet. So, yeah, um, I started initially on Friday doing this uh, this sketch that we're watching right now, this was done uh, initially Friday night, and then and I kind of stopped doing it. And this one right here was Saturday morning. Um, this particular um, sketch was done on Saturday morning, January 9th, I think. And I was hanging out with Ramen, and you know, Ramen Afshari is the founder of SketchZone.net. Uh, we have no connection at all. Uh, with the Sketch Zone podcast. There's another group called Sketch Zone and they do podcasts, uh, art podcasts. Um, we're not affiliated with them. We are sketchzone.net, totally different group. Uh, we typically hang out in Discord and yeah, <laughs> do artwork. So, um, so yeah, I got to hang out with Ramen and then I eventually finished this up, uh, this particular illustration on uh, Sunday, January the 10th. And that one was really, really fun because I got to hang out with my old college friend, Daryl um, Verrett, while he was watching me do this particular work. Um, so yeah, uh, it was just fun weekend in general. It's slightly hectic because again, you know, when, when I try to do illustrations, it's either... A speed paint which is a work that's under five hours and um, or a long grind which means that I'm doing a full render illustration which is around 30 hours um, I, I know that I wanted to keep my entry for the character design challenge a speed paint which is under five hours worth of work um, but I also wanted a little bit more developed than a five hour work, you know, so I was immensely on the fence on how I was going to approach this whole thing. Um, but yeah, I guess I can go talk about um, that in a sec. Uh, I guess the most important thing for me really to talk about is what's going on in, in our screen right now. Um, so at the very, very beginning, I did a few sketches, just warm up sketches and whatnot. And then these right here were just a bunch of thumbnail sketches for um, the overall look. So I, I did 10 of this standing character, standing pose, and I just kind of just did a bunch of sketches and whatnot while I was hanging out. And eventually I took a quick look at um, what I've done so far and so far i like this particular one and so what i ended up doing is obviously grabbing this sketch uh, putting it in another file um which i started calling this file toriel because uh, uh real quick um before i go into full detail the character design challenge for this month is uh, a redesign of uh some middle earth characters basically so the theme is middle earth uh jrr tolkien's uh wonderful wonderful masterpiece lord of the rings uh trilogy is the basis for this character design challenge and so what i ended up choosing was toriel originally but then i realized it's not really so much as toriel it's more like an elf ranger 
Um, so that's pretty much what I ended up going for. Um, but I kept the file name Toriel, which you can see in the very top. It says Toriel, which um, in case you guys are not familiar, Toriel is one of the characters from um, the Hobbit film series. Um, so yeah, she was initially my basis. I initially wanted to do Arwen, uh, Liv Tyler's character from the original Lord of the Rings, but then I ended up going with Toriel, but then it ended up really being more like an elf ranger. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, so again, going back to the process, first I did some few sketches and then as soon as I have, you know, the quick line sketch that are like, I decided to do a more detailed sketch, which is this one that we're looking at right now. Um, I kept the resolution of my file really small. It keeps me from over detailing because that I am notorious for over detailing. And I, I didn't want to be bogged down with a lot of details, especially since I'm really trying to budget my time for this. My initial budget for my time on how much time I was going to spend on this one was five hours. Everything needed to be done under five hours. And I totally missed that mark. Um, and there's a title card at the very beginning of this video and uh, at the in that title card it says the time of how much i spent and basically i ended up spending seven hours on on this particular character <laughs> so um but it's okay because i mean i had fun doing it so yeah but anyways um so basically i'm keeping my resolution small this resolution is under i think the resolution i'm working with at this point is about 500 pixels width times 750 height so it's really really small obviously but it's big enough for me to get a few details in for sketches um so as you can see that my final well this is not the final because really if i was to do a really good sketch it would be much cleaner than this but i also knew that i didn't have the time so i just kept it messy as it is um but anyway so you can see that this a little more refined sketch is obviously pretty clear as to what the general look of this elf ranger is going to be um she's going to have some form of heavy leather armor on the top part of her body around the chest area uh, she has some form of skirt over her pants and then of course a uh, belt with little pouches uh, on her waist as well as on her right leg and then of course um, she has some form of arm guards letter arm guard on her lower arm so and then boots of course so she looks kind of soldiery <laughs> which is the one I was going for but now that the sketch is done, um, I was going to start on the coloring process. But before I started on the coloring process, I wanted to take care of the floor. Um, character design challenge, one of their rules is that the background really shouldn't be so super detailed, which kind of makes sense because if you have like a super detailed background, it will distract the viewer from looking at the character which obviously is the main part of the challenge is the character. Um, and so I didn't want to go overboard with um, the background, you know, but I also wanted something for the background. Um, and what I really wanted was a marble floor, um, which eventually ended up having marble floors. Um, and that the original uh, suggestion by ramen was to go for wood he was suggesting that i should go for wood but then i ended up going with another pattern um after hanging up with him um but yeah so i ended up with uh, this pattern that i got from textures.com that is pretty much a marble floor pattern and then that's what I ended up using. But initially you saw me use like a wooden texture. And then I was going to do the wooden texture, but then I decided against it. I was like, let me just repaint this by hand. So that's what I did with that quick sketch. You know, I kind of 
gave myself a quick idea of where the perspective lines will be for the floor and where the panels are going to be. And then as soon as I set that, I did my quick coloring process, which my coloring process um, goes by really quick. Uh, my whole point in doing a quick coloring process is I just basically want to put down some colors and then blend them all together with the smudge brush just so that I could have this readable shape that I could use as a base paint to put my details on. So when I do my coloring process, I use David Ravoy's, um random mech brush with a random hue setting on it. And I just put in a bunch of colors based on a color scheme that I get from... Um, film oh whoa what is that website instagram called color palette cinema oh that that one <laughs> uh, color palette cinema has great palettes that you know you could use and so i grabbed a bunch of palettes from from that group and i basically use that as my base colors essentially and so i would pick a color from one of those palettes and then with the random hue, I get a little bit more hue variations and then I lay them down real fast, real quick. Um, in this case, I wanted for I went for something warm for the character and then a very cool background. And then as soon as I have all that quick coloring process, I obviously does my whole smudging thing, which is what I'm doing right now. You can see me do my smudging action, you know, the whole point of this smudging action is just kind of blend the colors in. Um, I'm really careful with this particular action because I can overblend uh, with the blending brush. Um, I want to make sure that when I do my blending that my shapes are still readable. In this case, I could still read where her face is. I could still read where her chest is and her arms. And I could read um, the quasi marble floor that I've laid down so far. So, and then now... After I'm done with the smudging, I get this whole nice base paint that I do my detailing on. So, um, but before I proceed with that, uh, I'm going to do like a quick edit with the floor. Um, what should happen in the next few minutes, I'm going to grab the um, texture, the photo texture that I really ended up using. Oh, well, before I did that, I obviously did some minor color corrections, which I just did just now. And then this one right here is a color overlay because I didn't want um, the initial smudge. The initial smudge was too colorful, so I wanted to make sure that um, there's a semblance of color similarity between the different parts of um, her outfit. So anyways, here's a photo texture um, and basically I'm just trying to get it all to line up with what I've drawn so far and then I'm doing quick edits with that and then I'm going to merge that photo texture real quick and the thing I do with photo textures is that um, I used to paint over it but now I smudge it just to make it look more painterly because I just don't want it looking too photorealistic in a way. I really want the overall look of my painting to be more painterly rather than photorealistic. So this is the reason why I smudged that photo texture and uh, just get me a few more details in there. And then as soon as I'm done with all of this, I up the resolution um, to my maximum resolution or to the resolution I eventually ended up working with, which I think was 5250. For the height and then I forgot what the width was but as soon as I have that then I start my detailing process um, I have a three-step process for my detailing process which is basically I delineate my edges make my edges sharper just so that the shapes could read clearer um, and then I accentuate my shadows if my shadows need a little bit of darkening I accentuate it and then I add highlights. Um, so in this case, I'm starting with the floor first, detailing it, and then eventually I will move on with the girl. And while part of this video is going on, I'm going to let you just hang out and watch for now. And I'll come back with a few more of some of my ideas and thoughts about this piece later on.
so this point was done um, uh, on January 9th. This was uh, right about the time I wrap up um, all the drawing and all the painting that I did on January 9th, uh, Saturday. Uh, and then I picked everything back up again on January 10th. Um, so I guess now would be a great time to talk about a few things that kind of runs in my mind about this particular piece. Um, earlier in the video, um, I, well, to quickly explain how I do my recording process, I basically do a quick edit of all my videos and then I watch it in real time while I make my commentary. And so basically earlier in, in this video, I mentioned something that I wanted to talk about later, but I totally forgot <laughs> what that was. Like I could not for the life of me what it was that I wanted to talk about. Um, but it's okay because maybe I'll touch on it uh, now that I kind of give, I'm about to give my own critique about this particular piece. So maybe we could, um, maybe that stuff that I wanted to talk about will get mentioned. If not, um, I could always write like an extra note on the description of this video anyways. <laughs> so my own critique of this video is um, the time. Uh, first critique would be the time. I gave myself a budget of five hours, so I went over it. Um, I'm very, very strict about the whole time thing, uh, simply because if I'm not strict with the amount of time I work on any of my illustrations, then I'll never ever finish anything. Um, my preference is to have long renders, long illustrations, 30 hour works. That's always been my preference. Um, I love those kind of artwork. The only unfortunate thing about those though is that it can be very, very taxing with my patients. I mean, hands down, if you're looking at the same piece of painting for five hours straight, you will just get bored of it. <laughs> so, so what I typically do with my long render illustrations is I try to stretch them out as much as I can. So I typically work on like one or two long illustrations at any given point in time. And when I started this piece, I have like two in the queue. Um, and I didn't want to start another one, especially for this challenge. So I decided that I was going to keep this as a speed paint. Um, and what I considered uh, as a speed paint is anything done under five hours any work done under five hours is what I would consider speed paint I'm basing that time based on plain air times uh, plain air is when you paint on location with your easel and your acrylics or oil um, if you paint in the morning or late afternoon you have about two hours to do a painting um, the light shift the light and shadows change because the sun moves so early in the morning and late in the evening or early evening late afternoon uh, the light changes so much that you only get two hours of painting you get about three to four hours of plain air painting if you're doing it at noon because the sun is high up and then at night you can have as many hours as you want because it's nighttime um, but really I base it on the daytime plain air paintings which is really anywhere between two to three uh, hours. Five hours is a stretch, but you can't technically have a five hour plein air painting if you're doing something at night. Um, so yeah. So that's kind of like my basis. Um, so I was really adamant about trying to get this done as much as I can. You know, I didn't want to super detail everything, uh, which is my tendency to do, which is the thing that I love the most. Um, I really wanted to get back on the illustrations that I'm working on, um, the long illustrations that I'm working on. So I, I knew that whatever it is that I'm going to turn in for the character design challenge for this month of January 2021, it would need it to be wrapped up by the end of that, that weekend, which I'm glad that I've managed this Sunday morning. So yeah. Um, Originally, I was going to do the recording Sunday afternoon, but I decided to do the recording now, which is January 11, uh, Monday morning. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, critique with time. I went over my budget. <laughs> and that's one of my critiques. Um, I really should uh, stick to my time. Um, the other critiques that I have is the perspective. The floor is, you know, I really like the floor, how loose I 
detail that you know it has enough details and at the same time uh, be loose enough to kind of look very very painterly so I like how I rendered it but I do not like its perspective and I knew that if I was going to edit the perspective it was going to add some more time so my quick fix for it is that the foggy background that I have on the very top you know how the image kind of goes from really dark blue to the top to like lightish bluish onto the floor it kind of looks like a fog basically behind her um i decided to just stretch it out like you know increase the fog basically and paint more blues uh right in the middle of the background area just to cover all that up just because i know perspective wise it's very very wonky um it just does not look good honestly um so yeah i don't like the floors i like how it's rendered i do not like its perspective um so yeah those are really the main things that was kind of running through my head when i was making this all of those things that was kind of running through my head and you fixing them would just take insanely too long and so i just decided this to do the simpler approach and you know wrap up this you know artwork as quickly as i can because you know i was still very much conscious of it with the budget of time that I have so yeah but overall like I'm happy with it you know um and I'm happy enough that I might even tag this for a longer illustration meaning that I could develop this some more and really really add on to the details and refine it you know the face for example can use a lot more work um I could really make it um I could really add more details to it but um there's my fog edit right there adding some more to it but yeah for an entry for the character design challenge i think it's pretty good enough um i yeah i, I love the colors i think the color scheme is really nice uh warm for the girl and obviously cool background and so yeah this illustration is about ready to be wrapped up um, I'm just doing quite a few floor edits then after that I'm gonna work on her reflection which Daryl Verrett has some great um, advice on on the reflections uh, he reminded me that reflections are typically blurry it's not super detailed uh, like it typically is and the reflection is typically uh, fades away if there's a bright light hitting it so in the case right now I'm about to paint the reflection right um, that lower the very lower part of the reflection should really be faded uh, because that bright light on the floor should be obfuscating it right and um, I shouldn't really have gone to full detail with painting it because really it should have been more fuzzy than anything else so Obviously, I did quick edits to make the reflection look more realistic and whatnot. And yeah, after all those edits, uh, everything is pretty much done for this wonderful entry for character design challenge. So yeah, I'm about to wrap up this video. There it is, looking really nice reflections right there. Just a few minor edits, a few more tweaks, and then it's done. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. Mm -hmm.